Hey guys, so a term you'll hear me refer to a lot in my videos, no matter for what game, is whale. So most of you would know, but for those of you that don't, a whale is a person in an online game that spends a large amount of money at the in-game cash shop in order to gain an advantage. It doesn't even need to be an advantage, uh, people call players in League of Legends whales that spend tons of money on skins. but Generally, a whale is someone that spends enormous amounts of money and thus can throw their weight around much more effectively in the ocean that is the game. So, what do whales gain from throwing around all this money? Well, mostly, for most whales, it's power. If you're playing a game, especially mobile games such as gachas or games with huge cash shops, then Usually, you can throw money at the game to allow yourself to progress faster. And in some games, you can throw money at the game to allow yourself to gain extra stats, more powerful weapons, more chances to increase the power of your stuff. In Black Desert, for example, you can throw money at Artisan's Memories so that you can gain extra chances with your memory fragments, or you can throw money at Costumes and put them on the shop. In a gacha game such as the Alchemist Code, you can throw money at gems so that you can do more rolls of the gacha to get m more units to limit break them and make them stronger. Uh, other examples are games such as Archage or Archage or how do you say that, where or Blade and Soul, where throwing more and more money into the game lets you progress much faster than a free-to-play player, and in some games get to areas a free-to-play player cannot reach. So whales are not necessarily a problem in online games. In fact, most people say that whales are what keep a lot of games afloat. While most players do tend to think that if a game has a thousand players and they all buy, for example, a seven dollar a month subscription, uh, then those are the players that the developer wants to market to. The developer doesn't actually want to market to players that only buy the subscription because even if every single player buys the subscription, that's only $7,000 they can make. But if each player, not even each player, if only 10 players spend about five to $700 each, then they've made almost as much or equal to the amount that the rest of the game, uh, the rest of the game made buying the subscription for an entire month. And $500 might seem like a lot, but to a lot of whales, $500 is just what they'll spend on a banner with characters that they like. If banners come out two or three times a month, then some whales could easily spend more than $1,000 in a month just alone. And that's if there's only 10 whales. Usually there's a bit more than that. Usually, I want to say it's about 5 to 10% of the game's population, from what I've observed, uh, with the rest of them being mostly either free-to-play or minnows or dolphins. So minnows or dolphins are a little less well-defined. A dolphin is usually pretty well described by online gamers as someone that spends a decent amount of money but doesn't go overboard like a whale does. A dolphin in Black Desert would be someone that buys the subscription in the value pack and might also buy a few other small pearl items here and there but doesn't invest to the same level as a whale does. They don't buy costumes to sell in the marketplace, they might not buy artisans memories. Whereas a minnow is usually someone that just buys whatever subscription package there is in a free-to-play game. Yes, they do technically spend money, but they spend the minimum amount possible for the most value. Neither of them are pretty much ever comparable to whales, as whales are known to spend thousands of dollars even just a month on a single game. There was a joke back in a gacha I played called Monster Super League that there were three major regions that the developers marketed to. You had the Asia region, you had the North American and European region, and then you had the goldfish region, or whatever the name of the guy who used a goldfish as an avatar was. Because this guy spent tens of thousands of dollars on the game. He had maxed out units, he had everything. And that is what a super whale can do. Like most whales will spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on the game, but the super whales will spend more than even more than that, they, they'll spend tens of thousands on the game. And this game model is only really available, like, whales will only usually spend this much if they're given the incentive to do so. If they're given the power, the visibility, and just the extra little things that come with spending money in the game, make the whale feel that spending the money on this game is a good idea.
So how a lot of games do this is they'll sell power. Now, for some of the games on my channel, such as Alchemist Code, uh, King's Raid, or Black Desert, the amount of power that is sold can vary. In the Alchemist Code, yes, whales are much more powerful than a free-to-play player initially, but as more free units come out, as more hard stages are added to farm current units, free players can catch up. They just can't really max out collaboration units. In King's Raid, where whales' power really comes from is unique weapon stars, where a free-to-play player can get one or two stars fairly easily for their favorite character's weapon. A whale could have a team full of five-star max rate unique weapons, which makes them significantly more powerful, but you can still play with the units, you can still use them, you can still get the unique weapons in a few stars, you're just not quite as powerful as the whale is for those specific characters. For Black Desert, a lot of people say that Black Desert is not pay to win, you cannot become significantly more powerful than paying, but I would heavily disagree with that. If I could spend an extra three or four hundred dollars on Black Desert, just in total, uh, I think I would be a lot more powerful than I am right now because I would be able to buy all the lodgings for my workers, all the storage in all the regions so that my CP wasn't locked up in those storages. So that would enhance my worker empire. I would always have a value pack ticking. Uh, there's just a lot of ways in Black Desert, and that's not even mentioning artisans' memories or costumes that you can sell for silver. Costumes are actually negligible. As 130 million silver or 150 million or however much the limit for costumes and the current maximum silver price on the market is, uh, isn't actually that much in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to the money spent. But artisans' memories are actually huge, with just how big a bottleneck memory fragments are for advancing in Black Desert. So really, whales have to be incentivized to whale. But because whales exist, companies are incentivized to create content for whales. There's no point in whaling in a game if the content of the game is not challenging at all to a whale. If the content of the game is designed purely for free-to-play players and players that have spent very little money, then whales will feel totally bored by the content. And some whales do that. They whale because they want to just absolutely dominate this game. They want to have no difficulty and just be the one that lords above everyone else. But other whales want there to be a challenge. They want there to be stages that they can barely clear and show off their really powerful units and have other players kind of idolize or venerate them. So in a game without too much PvP, for example, a lot of gacha games will have an arena, but the arena usually isn't a main, isn't a main focus, and usually whales have to show off in PvE, which is why there's a lot of leaderboards, there's a lot of really difficult stages that free-to-play players cannot or just have a lot of difficulty clearing, so that whales can clear them with some small difficulties or even some diff really real difficulties if it's like impossible for free-to-play players, and basically be idolized or venerated by the free-to-play community. In games where there's a heavy focus on PvP, the developer is incentivized to sell power, and they are incentivized to sell a lot of power, because in a PvP-focused game, if someone wants to whale, it's usually so that they can dominate other players. And if they're dominating other players, they want to do it flashily, which means they want to look good, and they want to do it in a way that shows their absolute dominance over the player. So, really, a lot of games will kind of try to skirt the line on selling power because they can't you don't want the game doesn't want to drive too many players away. There's no point in to a whale in whaling if there's no players to show off to. If you have some fancy plus 10 amazing uber units but there's no one else to play with and your uber unit's like the only unit on the server, then it doesn't matter because your uber unit is the normal average unit as it's the only one left. So developers have a sort of thin line to skirt where they have to provide free-to-play players with a sense of accomplishment and a sense that they are progressing and can get everything that whales are paying for, while simultaneously providing whales with a sense that if they pay, they will have an advantage and can show off and kind of dominate or at least be better than the average player. So they're trying not to scare away players by going, oh, we're not selling power, you can get all of this if you just play the game, while telling the other players, the small subsection of whales that's really funding a lot of the game, hey, you will get power if you uh, pay, you're going to be awesome, look at all this cool stuff we're giving you. 
So it's really a kind of difficult balancing act, and it's one that a lot of game companies will mess up, especially over time. As a company is bleeding users, they are incentivized to give more and more powerful things to incentivize the remaining users to pay. In essence, what they're trying to do is convert some non-paying users or some minnows and dolphins into whales. But when they do this, they run the risk of scaring away their existing whales. Because if a whale spent $1,000 to get 50 power, we'll just go with an arbitrary 50 power, a unit worth 50 power, and then, so $1,000 for 50 power, and then the company comes out with the same 50 power for only $200, the whale is usually going to be like, hey, wait a second, uh, th the power creep in this game didn't get that severe that quickly, why are you doing this? I spent $1,000 just to get this unit, I feel ripped off, I'm not going to play this game anymore. So... Not only do they have to run the balancing act, they've also got to run the act with regards to how much they're charging the players and how easily they're trying to convert players while retaining current whales. You don't want to chase two whales away just to convert one whale, but you also don't want to alienate the non-paying fan base so that the whales will have a basically an audience to show off to. It's a really delicate line. And it's one that game developers are treading kind of carefully, especially with recent developments concerning gamers being concerned about gambling laws, gamers thinking that microtransactions are far too expensive, which is definitely true in a lot of these games. Like, seriously, have you seen the price of, like, orbs in Fire Emblem Heroes? It's, I want to say it's like 130 orbs is like 80 bucks, um, which is way too much money, honestly, for that amount of orbs, seeing as that 16 summons right there. So, really, a whale is just someone that spends a lot of money in an online game. You've also got minnows and guppies, which are kind of interchangeable. They're value chasers. They will buy one or two small things to support the developer, uh, usually the things that provide the absolute most value in the game, which is usually a subscription pack of some sort, as that's an overtime package, and they usually won't spend more than about $15 a month. And then you've got the dolphins. They're not anywhere near close to whales. They're much smaller than whales, but they do spend quite a bit more than minnows. A dolphin will spend on the subscription pack usually. They'll buy a few of the smaller packs. And if they feel the need or they something comes out that they really want, they will open up the wallet to buy that item. The whale, of course, is the person that will buy every item in the shop and keep buying just in case new items come out. They'll buy items to reinforce their items, and if they lose those items, they'll buy more items to reinforce their new items. Whales are extremely important to the ecosystem of many freemium or free-to-play games, but due to the existence of whales and the profitability, it's difficult to say whether or not this is good for the gaming industry in general. Certainly whales allow for many more games to be made as small and even shitty game, get little gachas or tiny weird RPG games can support themselves off a cash shop as long as they can attract a few small whales. But at the same time, people shouldn't be expected to have to pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars just to remain competitive in a game. You should be able to remain competitive in a game while only spending money to support the developer through cosmetic purchases. Now the problem is, games such as League of Legends, which only offer cosmetic purchases, or Overwatch, are kind of the outlier because people always point to these games and go, hey, these are the games you should try to be emulating. Look, they've only got cosmetic purchases, you can buy Champions League of Legends, but you cannot buy like special champions, you ha can only buy the normal champions that are available for purchase with the in-game currency as well. Overwatch, you can only buy skins, voice lines, and other cosmetic items. You should emulate these guys. The problem with that is League of Legends and Overwatch are two of the biggest games in the world. League of Legends is the number one MOBA in the world, uh, and I believe it's the number one game in the world as well in terms of players. Like, it's absolutely huge. Overwatch is pretty similar. It's one of the premier FPSs in the world up there with Counter-Strike and Crossfire. It's played by millions of people, and it's developed by Blizzard. Like, Blizzard does not have money problems. World of Warcraft still brings in $15 per player per month. That's before, including the fact that they do have microtransactions for stuff such as character transfers, leveling your character to max level, 
plenty of different small microtransactions World of Warcraft that aren't actually that small. It's like 20 bucks for a character transfer, which is kind of absurd when you want to move your entire family of characters to a new server to follow whatever guild you just joined. Um, but I digress, back to the point. These companies are the exception to the rule because they are huge, right? Like, they have the player base to sustain on less money per player, but way more players. If you asked a small or freemium uh, develop, game developer, say, that only has maybe 5,000 to 10,000 active players, to only have cosmetic options and offer them for the price that League of Legends or Overwatch does, you're not going to be laughed at, but the amount of money they would make would tank hugely. And I'm not saying you can ask, can't ask game developers to make less money. You totally can, because, I mean, well, game developers used to just sell their games for, like, 60 bucks a pop, right? Like, you went, you bought a game for 60 bucks, that was the game. Nowadays, you go, you buy the game for 60 bucks, you, you boot the game up, and there's a cash shop staring in the face where the progression system is based in loot boxes. Hi, Battlefront 2. So... You certainly can be angry at loot boxes, but loot boxes do have some good. Whales allow for smaller developers to earn more money, which allows them to put more resources into the game, to develop more games, and to basically polish their game. A small, shitty game that has some good core gameplay elements could theoretically be supported by a few whales, and the developers could put use that money, turn it around, invest into the game, and improve the, not the shitty elements to match up to the good elements that the whales recognize as the core gameplay, and make a perfectly good working game. Uh, there's no real examples of this off the top of my head, unfortunately, but there's hope, because games such as League of Legends came from Dota, which came from... Dota stands for Defense of the Ancients, and it was originally a Warcraft 3 mod, which is a Blizzard game, uh, Warcraft was the predecessor to World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is based in the world of Warcraft. Duh, who knew? And it was an RTS, and Dota was just a custom game for it, a custom game mode that a lot of people played. And then it became its own game, and then that spawned League of Legends. Uh, a lot of drama there, won't go in, get into that in this video. And that was pretty much all free. So imagine what could happen if many more game developers spring up uh, paying through their game for their games through whales, and another gem suddenly burst through. Of course, this is not to say that I support whales. Honestly, I personally feel that the practice of whale hunting, as it currently exists in the game industry, is hugely problematic, especially for more competitive gamers that would like games to have, be an equal playing ground for everyone. And obviously, that's a bit idealistic, but. I shouldn't be expected to spend dozens or hundreds of dollars just to keep up with the Joneses or the Johnsons. I don't really know how that expression goes, honestly. Um, it's really kind of absurd the amount of money you're expected to pay these days if you want to stay on top of a lot of free-to-play, freemium games, or even games such as Black Desert. Like, Black Desert, people say, oh, you don't have to pay money for this. But if I want five pets, that's 50 bucks right there, which on top of the stick price of the game makes it a $60 game right off the bat. And then you include stuff such as lodgings, weight limit, inventory, a value pack, and you're looking at hundreds of dollars a year just to kind of stay competitive. Plus, it really discourages re-rolling, which is one of the most fun parts to do in a lot of other MMOs, because... Personally, one of the main reasons I don't reroll off Dark Knight is that she has max weight limit, which feels really nice. And going to a character that has a minimum weight limit feels really bad. So, really, I feel that the current practice of paying, not so much paying for convenience, but pay, paying to not experience inconvenience, as well as paying for power, paying to win, and o really overcharging for this is a problem. If Whaling could be done for like 40 bucks a month. Um, that would probably still be too much, but at least it would be much more tolerable because someone that wants to spend 10 or 20 dollars a month can earn a large amount of that power that the whales have. And as long as the rest of it is something you can achieve through just playing the game, then that would probably be acceptable. But the current act of paying hundreds of dollars a month is not something that a guy spending 10 or 20 dollars a month 
is going to be able to catch up to unless that 10 or 20 dollars a month has a huge drop off in effectiveness for power uh, to dollar spent right after that 20 dollar mark which most of these games do not have anyways in summary uh Whales are both good and bad for the game industry. I'm inclined to say they're more bad for the game industry, but for the developers themselves, whales can be a godsend. However, you've, they have to walk a delicate line between attracting whales and not pushing away their dedicated but more free-to-play or minoe fan base, as those are the ones that the whales really want to show off to and impress. The free-to-play players and the dedicated fan base, uh, sure you can yell at them. It is true that a lot of gamers these days are somewhat entitled, wanting games for free, wanting uh, everything to be handed to them. But I wouldn't say it's entitled to want to buy a game for 30 or 40 bucks and then not have to spend more than 5 or $10 a month on the game to feel competitive, especially if I'm putting in the hours that I put into a lot of the games that I play. Anyways, guys, this was kind of part guide, part video, part rant. Uh... Hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you like it, and have a good one.